Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking you through the options for the code wishlist for WooCommerce plugin. This is one of our new lines of products exclusively designed to improve your online store by boosting customer experience through various advanced features. In this case, the features relate to wishlists, their creation and management, among others. Right now, we're looking at an example wishlist on one of the plugin's demo pages. In this particular instance, we have a list that places the wishlist button here in the corner. And it even includes a counter for the number of wishlists that have this product in them. There are different ways to display the wishlist and different elements you can include on the wishlist page. This is just one possible design solution. And we can see here, for example, that I've added some of the products to a list already. The icon is filled, so the heart is red. I'll add another product now. We'll talk about the options for creating a wishlist later. For now, let's simply add this to my existing wishlist. Once I've done that, I'll get this pop-up with a link to my wishlist. Let's open it up. And here it is. These are all the products I've added to my wishlist. At the bottom, we have some recommended products. So, there are a couple of useful features for cross-selling. Now, I've done all this on the plugin's demo pages. However, for demonstrations and explanations of the plugin's options, I'll be using a different shop. I have it ready in another tab. This particular shop comes from one of the demos belonging to the free version of the key theme. We need the shop and the products within it to be able to use the wishlist. Once you have that, you can start setting up the wishlist plugin. I already installed the free version of the code wishlist for WooCommerce plugin. If we look at my plugin section, we can see the plugin is there and it's activated. Because of that, I now have a new item in my dashboard options, code plugins for WooCommerce. We are coming out with a whole line of different WooCommerce compatible plugins, so if you've opted to get several, you'll find them all bundled here. But since we're focusing on the wishlist today, it's the only one I have installed. I'll click on it to open its options. The options are split into three distinct sections, making it easier to find what you need. In the global section of the free version of the plugin, we have just one option, enable custom SVG upload. If you enable it, it allows you to upload SVG media files, which can later be used to replace the default wishlist button icon. Okay, that's it for the general section. Moving on to the next one, Add to Wishlist. Here, the options are split into two tabs. You'll see that in the next section as well. The options in the first tab are for customization, and the ones in the second are for stylization. So, starting in the first tab, General. The topmost option lets us pick the behavior for added products. Basically, how the Wishlist button will look on products that have already been added to the Wishlist. By default, it's set to show Add to Wishlist button. If we look at the shop I'm using, the button is under the product title and even if I added this product, its current behavior would keep it looking the same, only the button color would change. However, if we switch this to, for example, Show Browse Wishlist link, Save Changes, then if we go back to the shop, Refresh, and now when I add a product, the Wishlist button changes to say Browse Wishlist, in line with the new behavior I set. Then, if we look at my Wishlist page, then Refresh. The product I just added is there, along with some basic information about it. Ok, going back to the options. There is a third possibility for the behavior, Show Remove from List link. Let's see it. Save Changes, then Refresh the Shop page we can see the button has changed again. This time it says Remove from List. You can pick from these behaviors to set whichever one suits you best. After that, you can set whether and how the wishlist button will display on product loop pages. Those are all the places where your product list is shown and it includes shop pages and archive pages. Here we have this Show Add to Wishlist in Loop switch. If we turn it off, the wishlist button will vanish. Save changes, then refresh the page, and there, the button is gone. With this disabled, you've disabled the wishlist button on all your pages with the exception of single product pages, so be mindful when using it. I'll switch it back on. Alright, with this enabled, I can choose the button type I want to have. There are several options, as you can see. I'll switch from the default icon with text to only icon so we can see what it might look like. 
and with the next option we can set where the button will be. By default it's placed after the add to cart button but I'll replace that with on thumbnail to place the button over the image. This gives us a few additional options. One lets us fine tune the position, so we can put the button in the top left or top right corner of the image. Besides that we can adjust the button's offset. We have input fields for the top and side offset. The side depends on the position you picked, so for me this will be the right side offset. Also when adding a value here make sure to include the unit of measure that you want to apply, such as pixels, percentages, viewport width and so on. Ok, save changes. And let's see what my button looks like now. There. My wishlist button is represented by an icon and it's placed on top of the image in its top right corner. As you can see the default offset looks pretty neat so I felt confident leaving it unchanged. And it took just a few clicks to change all this. I'll go back to the options now and reset the button position and type. The default settings make it easier to demonstrate some of the other options effects. Ok, the next thing we have are product page options. And within them a switch that lets us decide if the add to wishlist button will be shown on single product pages or not. I'll open a product from my shop to show you. When the page opens we can see the wishlist button is here, right after the add to cart button. So if you don't want to have this button showing on product pages you can switch it off here. But if you keep it you can choose what type it should be and where it will be placed on the page. An interesting possibility I want to show you is the use of shortcode. Open the drop down, find the use shortcode setting, then you need to copy the shortcode given here, ok. Once that's done, save changes. And then we need to go to the WordPress dashboard, products. When it loads, open one of the products. This will do. And then paste the shortcode to your preferred location on the page. I'll add mine after the product description and update the page. Let's see the button now. Open the product page to check. I need to scroll down a bit. And here. I pasted the shortcode after the description text, so my button is placed in the section dealing with the description. Ok, that's what I wanted to show you. I can close these tabs now. And back in the options we can start exploring the style tab now. But before that I'll hit save changes to get all the things I changed showing on the page. Then let's open the shop and refresh. Ok, now my button is back to icon with text. Looking at the style options we can change how the icon looks. We can keep the default heart icon on the front end, that's this icon in front of the text. If you prefer you can replace it with a custom icon. Then you get an option where you need to upload that icon. I have a few already in my media library, so I'll just use this one. Select image and save changes. Then over on the front end, refresh. Now when we look at the add to wishlist button it shows the new icon. Mind you, this is for products that haven't been added to the wishlist. If we look at this button here we have a completely different look for products that have been added. You can change that as well of course, just find the wishlist added icon option. It offers us the same choice as the option above it, either using the heart icon or uploading something new. If uploading something new we recommend using an SVG icon so you can style it later. Otherwise if using an image the stylization options won't have much of an effect. Ok, under this we have a few options for adjusting the look of the icon you're using provided it's an SVG. Namely we can change its size, then its color, its color on hover and its active color. Besides that we have another set of options for adjusting the look of an SVG icon if it needs adjusting in the first place. Here we can pick our icon's fill color, its fill color on hover and fill active, its color when it shows an added product. But with the icon I'm using, one that's all lines, the fill options don't apply. Instead if I wanted to change its colors I'd use the stroke options. Let me make a few changes and then we'll see what they look like on the front end. Just a sec and save changes. Then refresh the page. If we look at the button icon now it shows the new colors I set. Ok, I'll reset the colors now, I just wanted to show you how they work. Also a brief note, 
Depending on the design of your graphic, the icon you use might only have the core part, which would be changed using the fill color options. Or it might only have the framework or outline like mine, which is changed using the stroke color options. Or the icon might have both. Whatever may be the case for you, these options cover all eventualities. Alright, I'll remove the icon too, and go back to using the default one. Save changes. Ok. After this, we have options for adjusting the general button appearance. These options are pretty straightforward, but I'll make some changes to them to show you how easily the button look can be changed. I'll start by setting 10 pixels for the padding. That will be the amount of space added around the entire button. If you want different values for different sides, simply list them all clockwise starting from the top. Then I'll change the colors. Just a sec. Add a border by setting how it will look from border width to border color. Give me a moment. Ok, save changes. Then refresh. The button is noticeably different. The new colors for the background and border are all here. I'll go back and clear this. In general, these options can help you create a more typical looking button than the textual one I'm using. You should simply decide what works best for your plan design. Ok, save changes. After that, we have options for changing the button text. As you can see, there are fields covering different button eventualities. I'll change one to show you. For example, the remove from wishlist text. I'll change it to say remove the product and save changes. Then refresh the page. Now when we look at the one product I've added, the button next to it shows its new text. Ok. With that, we covered the second section of the options and we can move on to the third. Wishlist page. Again, the options are split into two tabs, General and Styles. In the General tab, our customization options include the page you want to use for the wishlist display. You can use an existing page or create a new one for this. I made one and called it Wishlist so it's easier to pick out from the menu. The important thing here is that whatever page you decide to use, you need to copy this short code and paste it on that page. After picking the page we want to use for our wishlist, we can adjust its layout. If you opt for the premium version of the plugin, you'll get the multi-list feature, which lets your users create multiple wishlists, and there will be a whole new set of options for adjusting the layout of those pages. We'll be covering that later in the video. For now, we can decide if our wishlist page will display its title. If you keep it enabled, you'll be able to pick which HTML tag you want to use for that title. Let me show you what it looks like on my wishlist page. Here we are. This is the page title. Now, if we turn it off in the options and save changes, then refresh the page, this is what it would look like. No title. I'll reactivate it. Ok. Following that, we have a list of product features that can be shown on the wishlist overview. Everything that's ticked is a piece of information that would be shown on the wishlist table. If we look at the wishlist, we can see all that. The add to cart button, the date when the item was added, stock status, price, name, category, and so on. If you want to stop showing any of these, untick the box. I'll do that for the stock status. Save changes. And refresh. The table has one less column and there is no longer an indication of whether the product is in stock. So, those are the product features. After them, we have the wishlist page features. There are several really handy things here. For example, redirect to cart. If you enable this, users will be sent directly to the cart page after moving a product from their wishlist to the cart. Let me show you. Save changes and refresh the wishlist page. Now when I click to add this to the cart, I will be automatically redirected to the cart page and all the products I have in it. It's a good method to speed the way to the checkout. I'll return to the wishlist so we can keep viewing it. The next wishlist page feature we can enable is removing a product if it's been added to the cart. I'll turn it on and save changes. Before I show it, I'll add a few more products to my wishlist. Refresh the shop page and start adding products. Doesn't matter which ones, I simply need to fill my wishlist. Ok, let's pop over to the wishlist page now and refresh. Ok, all my new products are here. And if I click to add one to the cart, it will automatically be removed from the wishlist. 
OK. Going back to the options, I'll disable this once again and save changes. The next option we have is the Enable Wishlist Share. Keeping it on makes it easy for users to share their wishlists on a variety of social networks. If you want to stop sharing via any of these networks, simply untick the right box. Also, for Facebook or Meta sharing to work, you need to add your app ID to this field. And for X as well, you'll need to add your handle here for the sharing on that network to work properly. Now, let me show you what this looks like on the wishlist page. Here, above the table, you have the share icon. And if you hover over it, it unfolds a selection of different social networks that can be used for sharing. Alright, that's the general tab done. And we can move on to the style tab options. At the top, we can change the look of our social share icons. To start with, we can pick a new opener color and hover color. The opener is the sharing icon. This here, the one that triggers the others to appear. Then we have the color options for the social media icons, both regular and hover. So if we look at the network icons, their regular color is black, but on hover they turn red, which is their default setting. Then there's the social icon size option for setting the size of the share icon. Now, with the following options, we can make individual settings and style different social media icons differently. For example, we have the Facebook custom style first. Here we can pick the icon we want to use, the predefined default one or a custom one with upload. And we can also change the fill color, fill color on hover and the stroke and stroke hover colors for the icon. And we have the same options for other social networks. Each of the listed networks has its own section in the options where you can style its icon to stand apart. This brings us to the end of the options. With this covered, you have all you need to know to set up the code wishlist for WooCommerce plugin on your site. The free version to be precise. In the coming minutes, we'll be taking a look at the premium version of the plugin and what you need to know to set it up. Let's get started. I'll open my plugin section. Find the code wishlist for WooCommerce premium plugin, which I've installed beforehand, and activate it. Once I've done that, I can scroll down to the Code Plugins for WooCommerce option in the dashboard menu. Now, when the submenu opens, we have the wishlist like before, but we also have the registration page, which is new. This is where you'd go to enter your purchase code and register the plugin to get its full functionalities. OK, I'll close this. And we can start looking at the options. I'll hit refresh so the page loads up all the premium options from my newly activated plugin. Here we are. There are quite a few entirely new sections in the options menu, as well as new options within the sections we covered. So we'll start from the top. In the global section, there are three new options. The first one lets you decide if you want only registered users to be able to create wish lists. And to go with that, we can set how many days guest lists would be kept for before they are deleted. By default, it's seven days. Then we have the option to enable the multi-wishlist feature. If you turn it on, your visitors will be able to create multiple wishlists. I'll enable it so we can see. And this reveals an additional option that lets you set whether anyone can create multiple wishlists or just registered users. I'll keep this active and save changes. Then go to the shop page and refresh. Now, if I try to add a product to the list, I'll get this pop-up where I can choose the wishlist that I want to add this product to. Or I can choose to create a new wishlist. For that, I need to give it a name, for example, my new wishlist, then add. Finally, I'll get this notification that the action was successful. And if I go to check on my wishlist and refresh the page, I won't be seeing an individual list and its content. Rather, I'll have this overview of all the public wishlists on the site. Since they are public, they could be something that I've made or that someone else has. Alright, going back to the options. I'll turn off the multi-wishlist feature so it doesn't distract us. And save the change. Then go to refresh my wishlist page. OK, the singular wishlist is back. And its look is defined as part of the plugin. But if you want, you can turn it off. That's what the Enable Predefined Style option is for. It allows you to use styles specifically tailored to the plugin or to disable those styles if you prefer to use those that belong to your WordPress theme. I'll show you the difference. Switch it off, then save changes. 
and refresh the page. This is the look we have now. It's not bad, just simplified compared to the plugin style. OK, I'll turn the option back on. I think it gives us a more visually accessible look. After that, we have the Enable Custom SVG Upload option, which we covered earlier in the video. This means we can move on to the next section of the options, Add to Wishlist. Like before, the options are split into two tabs, and under General, a lot of the options are familiar, but we have a nifty new one that I'd like to show you. That's the Show Wishlist Count in Loop. If we enable it, Save Changes, Refresh, it will display a number next to the wishlist button on your shop and archive pages. This feature represents a counter of how many times this product has been added to a wishlist on your site. OK, I'll switch it off so it doesn't distract us. Save changes. Also, in the section for product page options, we have the same option, but this one adds a counter to single product pages. Let me show you. Save changes. And if we look at this product page, the counter has appeared right next to the wishlist button. I'll turn this off as well. Save changes. Under this, we have an entirely new section with cart page options. Here we have the show add to wishlist on cart option. This gives you a wishlist button on products placed in the cart. Before I show you how it looks, I'll fill up my cart with a few products so we'll have something to see on the cart page. Just a second. OK. View cart. And if we look at the products in my cart, each has this button saying remove the product. But that applies to the wishlist, not the cart. For removing a product from the wishlist, we have the X icon on the left. Whereas this button here shows the same behavior as the wishlist button on the shop page. For products that are already in the wishlist, the button is changed to say remove the product. So, if I click on one of these and remove a product from the wishlist, the button will return to its original look. Speaking of the button look, you can adjust that. We have this option here, which lets us choose the type of wishlist button that will be shown on the cart page. I'll switch to only icons so we can see the difference. Refresh the cart page, and there, the button is represented only by an icon. OK, going back to the options. Those were the additions to the General tab of the Add to Wishlist options. The Style tab options are pretty much the same. When I scroll through them, you should be able to recognize them all. Since there aren't any changes here, let's move on to the Wishlist page options. Looking at the General tab, let's see what interesting new additions we have. Oh, there's the Layout option for the single Wishlist page. It can be displayed as a table or a gallery. The default setting, Table, looks like this. I'll refresh the page to get the predefined plugin style back. So, this is the table layout. To go with it, we have this option, Improve Default Table Response. While all website setups nowadays are responsive, a little bit of help for a smoother experience never hurts. And that's why we have this option, to make sure your wishlist table will look good on everything from computer screens to mobile screens. However, if we switch layouts to Gallery, Save Changes, and refresh the wishlist page, this is what the new layout looks like. So you can pick the one you prefer, but I'll go back to using the table in this tutorial. Another new option is Products per Page. It lets us limit the number of products shown on each page of the wishlist. Once the wishlist exceeds the number set here, it will automatically get pagination to make moving through it easier. Besides that, we have a few other options below. One is the Enable Multi-Actions. Before we look at it, I'll quickly save changes to update the page with my layout change. With the table view back, it's easier to see the action checkboxes. The checkboxes allow us to select the products we want. I'll pick all and run a specific action on them simultaneously. You have several possibilities here. To add products to the cart, remove them from the wishlist, or move them to another one of your wishlists. You won't be able to send products to someone else's wishlist, though. Once you choose your action, press this button to run it. So, that's the Enable Multi-Actions option. Related to it, we have an option to enable the Add All to Cart button. It's active by default, and it gives us this button here. 
This is a great shortcut to moving all your products from your wishlist to your cart, especially if you don't keep the multi-action enabled. Still, you can disable this button if you prefer. Simply switch it off. Save changes. Refresh the page. And it's gone. Alright, I'll reactivate it. After that, we have an option to show additional features. These are different elements we can add to the wishlist page. We have the print button, ordering switcher, related products, and total amount. On the page, they look like this is the print button, then here is the total amount. Underneath, we have the section with related products, and the only one that we don't have here is the ordering switcher. I'll enable it so we can see it as well. Save changes and refresh the page. Here it is. This menu allowing us to change the order display of the products is the ordering switcher. In the options underneath this, we have the sharing feature, which we've already covered. But this is not the end of the wishlist page options. Rather, I'll go back to the global options now and enable the multi wishlist feature. Save changes. Now when we open the wishlist page section again, we have a new tab between general and styles. These options will help us set how the overview of multiple wishlists would look. To start with, we can set the layout for individual wishlists. By default, it's set to simple. And if I go to refresh the wishlist page, we can see the multi-list overview with its simple layout. The other possibility is the modern layout. I'll switch it on so we can see. And refresh the page. With the modern layout, we have the addition of product images, as well as a more grid-like look for the list overview. Ok, I'll go back to the options and restore the original setting. Next, we have the Show Wishlist Page Info option. It allows us to choose which bits of information about the lists will be visible in the overview. All three are enabled, so if we look at the page, refresh to restore the simple look, this column shows the items count. This one, the list privacy. It can be public, the list is visible to all users, private, it's visible only to users who created the list, or shared, which makes the list accessible only to those with the link to it. Now, you might be wondering what's the point of making different privacy settings if anyone can come along and change them. Well, not anyone can do that. I made these lists, so I can edit them. Anyone else would just see a line of information. And finally, the last bit of info we came here for, the date of creation for each of the lists. Ok, let's see what else we have in the options. This next section has options for adjusting how the public lists will look. We have some familiar options here, such as the layout and the number of wish lists shown per page. Then we have an option for user restriction. Basically, you can pick the type of users whose public wish lists will be visible. And under that, there is an option where we can set what pieces of information on the wish list will be visible, such as author, items count, and date of creation. Before we move on to the next set of options, I want to draw your attention to a feature on the multi list overview page. Here we can choose between looking at the wish lists we made only or looking at all the available public wish lists. To help you differentiate, the My Wishlist view has a table layout. It's simple and straightforward. If I go back to the options and find the layout for public wish lists, then switch it to modern and save changes, then refresh the page, the My Wish Lists view stays the same, but if I open the public wish lists view, then we'll have a completely different layout. And this might be easier when looking at unfamiliar lists to have images to help you see which one you want to open and take a closer look at. Ok, I'll switch the layout back to simple and we can carry on with the options. The next part gives us several sets of options for customizing various pop-up forms. The first set is for the modal pop-up form. That's the one that appears when you want to add a product to your wishlist. I'm going to change the form title, just a moment while I type it in. Ok, then we can set the title tag we want to use for it. Or change the default button tags from add to wishlist to something new. Finally, we can set the amount of time, in milliseconds, that the form will remain open if the users don't engage with it. I'll save changes now and you can see the precise form I've been talking about. And now when I go to add a product, here, the model pop-up form with its new title is there. Also, while I have the form open, this is the button whose text I could have changed had I wanted to. I'll close this. 
and we can talk about the other modal pop-up forms we have in the options. One is the create form. This one is for creating a new list from the multi-list overview page rather than choosing a product and then making a list. Before we take a look at it, I want to change the form title to show you how it might be customized. Ok, there we go. We can change the tag for this title if we want to. Or replace the button text with something new. Alright, save changes. And in the multi-wishlist page, refresh, then click to create new. And here we see the create modal pop-up form. Here's the title I set. As you can see, this form has a field for setting a list name, as well as a drop-down menu for picking the degree of privacy. Finally, we have the button. Again, its text is customizable. Alright, I'll exit and we can go back to the options to see the last of the forms. That's the modal pop-up remove form. This is a pop-up that appears when you want to remove a product from a wishlist. Like the others, it has the options for changing its title text, the title tag and the button text. And if we go to the shop page and click to remove a product, we'll get the remove modal pop-up form. Here's the title and the button text that can be changed. The form also includes this drop-down menu where, ok, I only have this in one list, but if you have the same product in multiple lists, you can choose which specific list to remove it from. I'll close this. And that was the last of the pop-up forms, as well as the multi-wishlist options. If we scroll back up to open the style options, we only have the addition of the wishlist table style options here. And they are pretty straightforward. We can use them to change the color of the row with the headings, the background color of the table itself and the border color. The rest of the options here are already familiar. If we look through them, they are all the ones we covered earlier in the video. Ok, now that we've looked at this, I'll go back to the global options and disable the multi-wishlist feature. There. And we can open the next section, ask for estimate. Before I forget, save changes. Now, the ask for estimate is a contact form that visitors can use to reach out to you. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. The first option is for enabling the ask for estimate button. On the front end, refresh. This is it, underneath the wish list. And if you disable the button, you will essentially disable the form as well. But if you decide to keep it, you can customize all the fields so the message is easier to process. So this field accepts the recipient's email address. If you add multiple ones, make sure to separate them with a comma. Then we can change the email heading. The default one is new estimate request. Besides that, we can change the email subject. There are a couple of preset placeholders that you can use here. And that's it for the form itself. But we also have a couple of pop-ups that go with it. The first is the modal pop-up form. This is what the users will get when they click the button to send the ask for estimate form. So this is like, uh, are you sure you want to do this form? And for it, we have the options to set the title, then pick the tag for it and choose a button text. The other pop-up we have here is for a success notification to confirm that the message was sent successfully. And we can customize several things for it, like the form title, the title tag, the text that will be shown under the title, and we can set how long the form will be displayed. To wrap up, let's open the wishlist page to see the asked for estimate form. So if I click on the button, the form appears. It's very straightforward. Here is the title that you can change and the button whose text is changeable. And once a visitor types up their message and clicks to send it, they'll get the first modal form asking them if they want to send the message and then the second confirming the message was sent successfully. Alright, that was the ask for estimate section. Let's move on to the next one, the wishlist widget. Here we can set up a widget that would display the wishlist or multiple wishlists in the form of a drop-down window or a side area accessible from any page. So your visitors wouldn't have to, for example, navigate away from the shop page. Before we can go over the options for the widget, we first need to add it to the page. For that, we need to go to the dashboard menu and open Appearance Widgets. Here you'll find a list of all your available widget areas. I want to add the wishlist widget to the header widget area, so I'll click to open it. Whoops, wrong one. Here we go. And search for the one you want. In my case, that's the code wishlist dropdown. Ok, update. And now we can go back to the options. 
The first tab here has options for the wishlist drop-down widget, which is why I added it first. We'll look at the side area widget once we're done with this one. The first option here is for picking the wishlist opener icon. The default one is a heart icon, just like the one we had for the wishlist button. If you don't like it, you can always upload a custom icon. I'll save changes because we added the widget to the header. And I want to check that it's there, so refresh the shop page. And if we look at the header area, the wishlist widget is right here. We can see the heart icon. When I hover over it, the drop-down showing my wishlist appears. I can see all the products I added to it and add them to cart or remove them. Alright, going back to the options, we can change the opener icon styles. That includes changing its color, its color on hover, the icon size and the count text size. The count is the little number here in the corner of the heart icon. It's there to show how many products I have in my wishlist. Besides that, we can also change the style for the drop-down area itself. That means adjusting its width, height and padding. For example, I'll clear this change I made for the width beforehand. And we can save changes. And see how the drop-down looks with all default values. And when we hover over the opener icon, the default is a bit narrower now, but all the products fit, their titles are short enough, so it still looks good. And that's pretty much it for the wishlist drop-down options. We can check out the wishlist side area now. Before we start using the options, I need to add the new widget. So, back to the widget section of the dashboard. And here in the header area, I'll remove the wishlist drop-down widget. Delete. And then I'll add the wishlist side area widget. Just let me find it. There. Update. And then let's go to the front end and refresh. Now when I go to the opener icon and click on it, the side area opens. And we can see the contents of my wishlist. Okay, let's take a look at its options. As for the widget section, I can close that. And then go to the options. Looking at the wishlist side area options, we can see they are a lot like the options we had for the drop-down widget. So we can choose between keeping the default heart icon and uploading a custom icon. And in the style options, we can change the same things as with the other widget. So the icon color, hover color, size and count text size. Then for the side area itself, we can choose its width and padding. I'll change the width to 500 pixels so we can see what the change might look like. And refresh the page. Now when I open the side area, we can see it's much wider than before. You can fine tune this value to best fit your site. Ok, that covers the wishlist widget section of the options. We can take a quick look at the next one, which is marketing. This is where you can compose templates for various types of email messages that would help you boost your sales. The first one is for promotional email. It's intended to notify users of discounts on their wishlist product or products. When it comes to customizing this message, we can pick the email heading. Simply type something new in place of the default message. Then we can set the email subject. And under that, the email content. It allows you to use a variety of placeholders to create the most effective sales email you can. For example, in the default text, we have a product of your wishlist is on sale, accompanied by placeholders that would add the product image, name and price after this line. You can play around with this and mix and match the provided placeholders. Ok. The next email template we can use is for the back in stock email. This is a message that users would get when a product from their wishlist was back in stock. To start with, we need to enable sending these messages, and that will give us the options for customizing them. Some of these options are familiar from earlier, but we have a couple of new ones as well. There's product exclusions. It lets us list products that we don't want to send notifications about. When you click on this field, it will open a drop-down with a list of all your products, which you can then mark for exclusion. Then we have the user exclusion option. It allows us to set which users wouldn't receive back-in-stock notifications. This is just a demo site, so there isn't much of a choice, but you can exclude yourself or any registered users you want. After that, we have the more familiar options. They include the email heading, then the email subject, and finally the email content. Again, we have a number of placeholders we can use to create the most effective message we can. Alright, let's take a look at the third email template now. It's for the on-sale email. I'll enable it so we can see the options. 
and they are pretty close to what we just covered. Namely, we have the product exclusions option. Just like with the one earlier, we can pick the products that won't be advertised as on sale. Then we can exclude certain users from receiving these on sale emails. Then for the message itself, we can set whatever heading, subject and content we want. And that's it for the marketing section of the options. The next one we have is all wishlists. Here you'll have an overview of all the wishlists on your site. The ones you see here are all mine, but you can see a few were made as admin or a registered user and a few as guest. So you have an insight into who made the list as well as its degree of privacy. If I switch to public, the view doesn't change because all the lists I made I set as public. But once you have actual users, there will be private and shared lists too that you can track. The other thing I want to point out here is the bulk actions option. So you can select a certain number of wish lists or all of them and using bulk actions delete them all at once. And don't forget to click the apply button. Besides that, another useful feature is the search function if you're looking for a specific wish list. Okay, let's check out the next section, popular products. Here we can see which products are most frequently added to wish lists. Like the previous section, this provides insight into what users are really interested in and helps you tailor your cross-selling and marketing efforts. With features like this, the wishlist plugin aims to help you grow your business while serving as a very user-friendly tool for your customers. As you've seen, the Code Wishlist for WooCommerce plugin is a very versatile addition to any e-commerce business. And we hope this video managed to show how easy it is to set up and use. Finally, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about the new content we post. Thank you for watching!